Hey guys, how you doing on this Sunday? So uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you a quick video of this 281 I picked up and I got a good deal on a brand new OEM 288 top end. So I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild and port this for a buddy. And uh, it's got, it had some cool stuff on it. It's a really beat up saw though. But uh, you know, I had, it came with the eliminator cover. It's all cracked and broken there. and. Someone drilled holes in it, but it, that's still pretty cool. And it came with a pro safety full wrap, which was cut. So now it's a half wrap, but uh, I've never seen one of these. Couldn't find any information on Google about them. Uh, one guy in the forums told me they did exist. I don't know. So I thought that he even liked that. You know, it's some weird ghetto fab half wrap now, but hey, he likes that kind of stuff. So it's cool with me. Uh, you know the muffler he doesn't want me to touch the muffler at all he wants a real ugly badass saw I put this uh, funny starter handle on it that someone had cut down so now we got a little little low rider going on there and somebody made this homemade outer spike it's a little bit off to the factory but he likes it so I'm gonna leave it it's just it's gonna be an ugly badass saw but I already tore this sucker down got in the ultrasonic it's squeaky clean now. It's got some defects. This is how it broke. This is clear, clearly an X-Faller saw. Definitely an X-Faller saw. This broke. Shouldn't leak. Looks fine. But I got it all set up and ready to port. Got my wheel all on there. Got my little indicator. It's just a little solder. Went ahead and marked off skirt width and bottom. How much skirt you got to use. Now with a used cylinder, you can you can just see where the skirt ends are the marks, but since this is new, I needed to do that so I know how wide I can go. And I got it all on here to get on the lathe, do the squish band cut. Just thought I'd share this with you guys and uh, I'll probably keep you posted. I'll, I'll post some pics and things like that. So definitely some after videos. And oh yeah, here's my notepad keep track of you know everything I do on these ported saws some of them you know I've just recopied and others you know you make little adjustments and it's just an ongoing thing with porting chainsaws so yeah I'm gonna get back to watching the all-star game here and have a good one so we're here at the lathe so I got it all zeroed in so the way you do that is by basically three different ways so you chuck it up here now the easier ones to do this with as far as get them zeroed out quickly is are ones that are just happen to be flat on the top of the cylinder other ones like the 461 460 where they kind of come to a point over here it, it just it makes it harder to get it bolted up here to the fixture nice and square where this one was pretty quick to do because it was flat. So it's just, I think what I'm getting at is one of the biggest hurdles I'd say to getting started with porting as far as doing base cuts and squish bands, pop-ups, whatever, more so squish bands, not really pop-ups, that's pretty simple. Um, the biggest hurdle to get over is just getting your mind around on how, how to do this. So basically you need an indicator that'll measure up in the cylinder and down here and as you get into using a lathe that's just common practice for getting any cylindrical piece completely true and um and so basically you move it you know you need a four jaw independent chuck and you move it the x and the y axis up and down left and right and then on top of that you use these bolts to move it that way as well and then if you get to a point none of that's working too you actually physically have to kind of tap it to move the entire fixture and um basically just a series of doing that you come in here you you spin it you know you get it you do it you get it at zero and you come out here oh it's off so then you fix this one and then you come back and now this one's off so you get this one back and you come back and you get that one on oh this one's off again you get this on you come back square that up you square this up you check that barely off a little few adjustments on here boom you got it then you can get your boring bar out and you can make your cut 
And I mean, it's it's not really as hard. I know when I first got this lathe, I, I had no idea how to even use the lathe when I got it. When I went to the guy's house to buy this lathe, he was like, oh yeah, you want to run it? And I was like, honestly, I have no idea. Like, oh, you, I'll just watch you do it. I don't even have a clue. And so I brought it home, you know, YouTube hooked me up with some videos and just started going at it. And I remember my first time putting the cylinder on here. It probably took me an hour to get it squared. But eventually I got some easier to use tooling, some dial indicators and stuff that made things easier and just practice. I think the biggest thing I figured out was, well, you can just flat out hit the entire fixture to rotate it in the jaws. And like I said... First time doing it, it's going to be easier if you start with a saw that's flat on top because you're more likely to get this completely square with that type of cylinder. But uh, so, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the squish band on this and then uh, get moving on over to cutting the base. And there we go, squish band done. Nice flat, wide squish band, small combustion chamber. She's gonna work. All right, so I'm getting it set up to do a squish band. I swapped it out to the three jaws, just a little quicker. I gotta flip those teeth around on the floor and then it takes a bit of time to get it centered. And my three jaw is accurate enough that this, this works perfectly fine. So, you know, I got my mandrel all turned down to spec, put it on there, tighten this bad boy down. Boom, there we go. Friction holds it on there. And then you, know, you cut this little release because I, I will have to cut the cylinder extension or it'll hit the inside of the case. Most saws are that way, even sometimes with just a base gasket delete, but some saws aren't. This one is definitely one. If you go past a base gasket, you gotta, you gotta cut that extension.